Good morning, AWC. Good morning. Good morning to all of our visitors. We want to welcome you to our 1015 morning service here in Mesquite, Texas. Glad you joined us this morning, whether you're watching by Facebook or YouTube. We're glad to have you to worship with us and celebrate our God and your God this morning. This is the fifth Sunday in May, meaning that we're closing out the first half of the year. And in the month of May, in the month of that first half of this year, we've seen a lot of things happen, just like Job did. But I like that verse in Job chapter 1, verse 22, when all that calamity came upon him. He said, in this, Job sinned not, nor did he charge his God, or nor did he charge God falsely. Our God is righteous. Our God is holy. He is just, and he's righteous. Would you join us in prayer today as we pray to God? Would you put a state on your mind, a country on your mind? Because surely our world needs it. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are holy, you are righteous, and you are a good judge. Psalms 96 said, when you come, you shall judge the world righteously with your righteousness and the people with your truth. Father, we thank you so much how you have kept us in this last five months. Not just this five months, Father, but down through the years. But God, that Goliath is still standing in the land. That Goliath that's called racism. It keeps rearing his head up in our country, in our churches. But Father, just like you sent David, we know you're going to send your son, the rock of ages, to destroy that giant. So Father, we thank you. We ask God in the name of Jesus that you encourage all those with hung down head that they can look up to you and find comfort and find hope, God. For you're surely still on the throne and you're still in control of what's going on in our world. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Even in the midst of this time, Father, we're losing loved ones. Our loved ones are dying. But God, your hand is still with us. And Lord, we say thank you for wiping every tear from our eyes. God, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you so much for all the graduations, God. All those parents that was able to celebrate with their children, God. Thank you, Father, for raising up our churches, God. Bringing us closer together, God. White God, black God, Asian gods, Indians, God. All those that call upon your name. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you said, Father, you will raise up a standard against him. Father, let us raise up your righteousness. Let us raise up your confidence. Let us raise up your holiness, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. When we sing, Father, let us sing with voices of triumph. Let us sing with worship, God, praising you, glorifying you, God, because you are God and you're worthy to be praised. God, in the name of Jesus, continue to keep us. Continue to stand with us. We will still talk to that giant, Father, that's in our land. Who are you coming to defile the army of the living God? We will stand on our post. We will keep loving. We will keep hoping. We will keep walking in righteousness because God, you are our God, and we love you. Father, as a praise and worship team, God, to lift up the confidence of those that's listening to us, God. 
let them sing with the voices of angels God in Jesus name thank you father amen amen praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord. come on praise the Lord everybody this is the day that the Lord has made and I don't know about anybody else but I choose to rejoice and be glad in it come on come on get out of your bed get out of your room come on let's get out
Jesus, he's worthy to be lifted. He's worthy to be glorified. Come on. I wish I could hear you over the phone or on Facebook or over on YouTube. But if you know God's worthy to be praised, I would that you would open up your mouth and your heart. And shout, God, you're worthy to be praised. Come on and shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. And I give you glory. morning because he's a wonderful God. Let's do it this morning because he's a kind God. Let's give him praise because he's a merciful God. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're not here to pump and pump nobody, but we're here to encourage the feet of the goodness of Jesus. And all things are for you. There's no way that you can think about and not thank him for it. There's no way that you can think about his kindness and not thank him for it. There's no way that you can think about how he continues to keep us and continues to protect us and continue to provide for us and not thank him for it. When someone does anything for you, it is just common courtesy to respond with a thank you not an entitled thank you because you owed me this, but a thank you because you didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad you did. Hey, we, we serve an awesome God, a, a wise God, a smart God. I think sometimes our verbiage insults who he is and how big and how great he is. He can do things for us. He's done things for us that nobody could ever do. We're in a pandemic right now. We're facing all kind of things in our hearts and in our minds and in this country. And sometimes we, we look around for answers. When the answer is right in front of us, the answer has been with us. The answer has said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I was thinking a couple of days ago, with just about everything that was going on that's going on right now. And for some of us, it feels like our hands are tied. Lord, what do I say? What do I do? How do I comfort this one? How do I comfort that one? What do I give him? And as I was meditating on those questions, there's an old song that we used to sing when I was a little girl. And it said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Oh, Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Come on, let that resonate with you Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Oh, Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus
everything that's going on right now, that's the safest place to be. King of glory, feel this, feel this place, because I just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. Everybody help me say, King of Hope that you're enjoying the service so far. Whether you're streaming or you're here with us, we are so happy that you're here. We will resume in-person services Sunday, June the 7th, beginning at 9 a.m. with Bible 102, followed by morning worship at 1015. If you are sick or displaying any illnesses, please stay home. If you're uncomfortable with coming out, please enjoy our services online via Facebook Live and YouTube, both at 1015 a.m. There are several ways that you can help us advance the kingdom. You can mail to give, Givelify, or you can text it. Your contributions are appreciated. Now enjoy the rest of the service and we'll see you next Sunday. He's the only one that can change it. He's the only one that can. 
just clap your hands where you are and open up your mouth and give God a heal. Somebody shout God. Somebody shout God. Somebody shout God. For the world today. I'm so thankful that I know the name that's above all names. I'm so thankful that he walks with me and talks with me. I'm thankful that he keeps me in his arms. I'm thankful that he shields me and protects me along the way. Anybody glad for the name of Jesus? Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. And if you're at home, come on, open up your mouth and just say, I thank the Lord for the name of Jesus. Welcome to Antioch Worship Center. We're so glad that you tuned in with us this morning. And those that are in the sanctuary, praise the Lord to you, you and you. Amen. The Lord has truly been good to us in spite of everything that's going on. Amen. I am. I have to be very honest. Uh, my heart and mind is everywhere, amen, and I'm just asking God that he'll have his way, amen. I'm just asking him to have his way, amen, because the world, amen, needs to see that Jesus still has all power, amen. He still has all power in Minnesota. He has all power in Texas. He has all power in Georgia, amen. He is a God that is still in control. Amen. And we have to keep our eyes on him. Amen. Keep our eyes on him. Remain focused. Amen. And continue to pray. Amen. That God will heal the land. That he will heal the land. Things that are going on is not new to us. Amen. It's been going on for a very long time. But I know that God is still in control. He is still in control. And as believers, we have to take that stand and stand on God's word. Amen. Stand on his word. And I dare not get into all the politics and all the things and my personal opinion and what my perspective is. All I know is that God is in control. And because I know that my opinion and my perspective has no, no, I'm going to say it again, no authority. It has no, it, my two cents is not worth anything. It's not worth anything. People, we have to stay focused on God and his word. Amen, amen. That's all I'm going to say about that whole thing. Praise the Lord. Come on, put a smile on your face, those that are here. Amen. I wish we could come back and do our greeting song. Amen. Let's just come back and do our greeting song. We're going to shift. We want you to feel welcome. Amen. I know the power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. Amen. And therefore, I am excited and glad about it. Amen. As they come, we're going to welcome you officially to a place where change can happen. Can I sing with y'all?
or welcome to a place where change can happen. Amen. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Amen. And we're so excited that you are here with us. Amen. We're getting ready to receive our offering and then move into the word of the Lord. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Be excited about giving time. Amen. The Lord has kept us through all these, all these changes that have taken place. Amen. And I have said so often, I've said it actually every Sunday. Amen. This is a time where we should not. Amen. We should actually, excuse me, we should keep going and keep giving. Amen. Into the kingdom of God because, amen, we are moving forward in spite of what the world is saying, in spite of what the naysayers are saying. Amen. We are moving forward. Amen. To build the kingdom of God. And we're so excited that you have partnered with us this morning. Amen. To do just that. Amen. To do just that. Amen. We have so much that we're trying to do. Amen. Across uh, the city and, and everywhere. We want, we want to make sure that we are doing what we need to do. Amen. To keep things um, uh, in order. Amen. Keep things in order. Antioch Worship Center, thank you so much, amen, for continually to share, amen, in your giving and being a blessing to our church, amen. It's because of you that we're still standing, amen. It's because of your finances, and we're so thankful, amen, that you have continually, continually to sow, amen, in here. Even when you don't understand, even when your bank account says that you shouldn't, amen, you rebuke that devil and you keep on doing what you got to do for the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the truth of it is, God don't have to do anything for us. And for us to just to give a monetary gift back to him, that's just a portion. Amen. That's just one of the ways that we can say thank you. Amen. That's just one of the ways we can say thank you. Amen. We have on your screens or it has appeared on your screen. We got several ways that you can show with us this morning. Through Givelify, you can search us on the Antioch Worship Center. Also, Cash App is available to you as well. And you can text to give. Amen. If you don't feel comfortable with doing the digital way, you can always do it. Amen. Via the Pony, USP, United States Postal Service, and mail it in. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're so thankful that you've shared in this moment. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and we're moving. Amen. To the word of the Lord. Amen. To the word of the Lord. We honor everybody in their perspective places. To God be the glory for the things that he's done. To my lovely wife. Amen. Who is such a jewel to the kingdom of God. Amen. Y'all send some likes and some hearts. Amen. And by way of showing that you love her just as much as I do. Amen. If Deacon Earl was here, he'll holler. That's my first lady. Amen. Amen. But, uh, but we will soon be opening up our church. Amen. And we have set things in order to follow the, 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 the requested mandates uh, for us to come together and fellowship. We'll be back here next Sunday. Amen. On campus. Amen. Those that want to come. Amen. You're more than welcome to come. Amen. To a place where change can happen. If you're viewing us. Amen. Via, via our social media platform. Our church is opening next Sunday, the first Sunday. We will, our doors will open. Amen. Our doors will open, and we'll be here in fellowship and worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ain't nobody got happy in the sanctuary about that. I know y'all probably tired of singing to empty chairs. <laughs> Amen. Next Sunday, if the Lord delay is coming, we'll have some people here that, that love the Lord and want to share Amen. And praise and magnify him with us. So come on next Sunday. We're open. Amen. We'll be back here on campus. Amen. Our campus in Mesquite. Amen. Our campus in Mesquite. <laughs> Amen. Our campus in Mesquite. Come on. Let's get ready to go to the word of the Lord. Amen. To the word of the Lord this morning. Second Corinthians chapter five. My wife giving me Google googly eyes. Y'all, y'all, y'all better pray. I, I quick to. Shut it down and go to the house. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. I, 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 I was, we were traveling, coming home from Ohio and no, going to Ohio, and um, my wife and I, we was traveling, and I was, you know, I had some quiet time, and I was just thinking, and, and I was just thinking about what's going on, and I've never been um, a minister uh, t 
to preach to a situation. I've never been a minister to preach to a situation, but my heart was grieving. Amen. And my thoughts were everywhere. My thoughts were everywhere. And I was just beginning to ask God, amen, what could be done as believers? I understand that some believers are protesting. Uh, you know, some are praying. Uh, some, some are doing this and that. But I wanted to know what, what could I do as a servant of God? And he began to minister to me and show me some things. And, and I came across this scripture. And I want to share this thought with you today. And my prayer is that it comes out the way it's been ministered to me. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 18 through 20. And it reads, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Reconciliation. That's a lot of syllables. Uh, verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. My thought this morning as you get ready to take your seat is we have a job to do. We have a job to do. We have a job to do. It's my thought this morning, uh, and I want to share the thought and the processes uh, that has, has come across me as the Lord was ministering uh, to me this thought. Jesus Christ came. He came to bring peace between God and mankind. His job was to restore humanity, harmony, excuse me, between the two. What sin disrupted, the shedding of Jesus Christ's blood restored. I think I want to say that one more time so that we can adjust the settings. Jesus came to bring peace between God and mankind. His job was to restore harmony between the two. What sin disrupted. The shedding of his blood restored. Jesus entered into the world with the fullness of God dwelling permanently in him. He was fully God and yet willingly became fully man so he could usher in a contract between man and God. Fully God but was willingly to become fully man so that he could usher in a contract between man and God. He became the delegate, the delegate for both parties. The result was the result was the reconciliation, reconciliation of all things which pleased God. The word reconcile means to bring back the former state of harmony. I said to bring back the former state of harmony. And this was done through Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for you and I. The sacrificial system in the Old Testament, uh, particularly through uh, the uh, Leviticus and even in Hebrews, talks about forgiveness could not happen without the shedding of some blood. So it had to happen in order for him to reconcile us back to him. Forgiveness had to take place. Now I'm afraid to go down this road because... A lot of us have forgiven with no reconciliation. Right. Woo. Uh, we, we, we have fixed our minds to believe that it's okay 
to forgive without any reconciliation. Ooh, it's quiet, it's quiet, it's quiet. And I, I know we all have our perspectives and our views concerning forgiveness. It's such a broad spectrum when, when we personally have to deal with forgiveness. But Jesus came and forgave and reconciled. I told you uh, what reconcile means. It means to bring back the former state, to bring it back into fruition, to bring it back together again, back to its original state. So I want to propose this question. Y'all don't have to answer it. Y'all ponder on it. Uh, can I truly forgive someone without reconciliation? Ooh. Uh -huh. we, we're rather... Say, I forgive a person, especially ones that have hurt us, and to forget about the relationship. Park your sandals for a moment, I sure will. What if God only forgave us with no relationship? Hmm? Where would we be if he, if he had forgave us with no, with no reconciliation? Oh, I, I'll give you an answer. We'll be vulnerable to do it again. So, he forgave us and brought us back to him. He didn't look at what we did. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. He didn't hold us hostage to the hurt we put him through. So, as believers, why do we hold people hostage to the hurt that they did? We hold them hostage because we do not do any reconciliation. I know some of y'all are probably saying to yourself, uh, but what if they continue to do it? I want to put that question right back on you. You continually to do what you do, but yet he keeps us in harmony. Because the forgiveness was done through the shedding of his blood. That's why when he looks at us, he sees us through his redemption power of the shedding of his blood. And he keeps us in harmony. He keeps us in harmony. Uh, and so we find here that Jesus has brought us back to a place of harmony. He entered the world with the fullness of the spirit dwelling in him. We understand that reconciled means to bring back the former state. And this was done through Christ's blood shedding on the cross for us. The sacrificial, and I'm repeating myself, but that's okay. The sacrificial blood that was taking place was a perfect blood that was given as a sacrifice so we could be forgiven. Now, we don't shed any blood now to forgive. We have the power to say, I forgive. And we're not required to give any blood. But there is a requirement. I'm about to get in trouble. I'm saying it because I don't care. But there is a requirement to reconcile. Oh, my Lord. His perfect blood was given as a sacrifice to forgive us. And not only, watch this, this is why reconciliation is important to us as believers. Not only did it cover our sins, it wiped them out and anything that accesses us because of them, accuses us because of them. He wiped them out. He doesn't hold them against us. He forgives. When Jesus forgives, he forgives. I wonder if any of us have truly forgiven. Now, I'm not saying that the thought doesn't come back. But what I am saying is you have the power to put that thought in his place. Not to play out the thought. Not to bring it back up and throw it in that person's face. Uh, that's, not, that's not reconciliation. That's not forgiveness. Because the Bible says that Jesus, when he forgave, he forgave and he wiped all our sins away. Everything that needed to be done has been finished, and Jesus Christ took care of that. However, we still have a part to play. If we're going to be Christ's ambassadors, I believe we have to be partakers first. Uh-huh, see, that's, 
Maybe that is why some of us have a hard time witnessing. Right? Some of us have a hard time being ambassadors because we have not partaken in the reconciliation through Jesus Christ. Maybe, just maybe, some of us are moving in gifts and operating in our own will that we're missing the true meaning of being an ambassador. I told you earlier, the thought is we have a job to do. In order for us to do the job correctly, we have to get things right with ourselves. Can't walk around with bitterness in my heart. I can't minister with unforgiveness in my heart. I have to be a partaker in order to be an official ambassador for Jesus Christ. We have a job to do. No one needs to hear your opinion about a matter. Nobody needs to hear your perspective of what your view is. If it does not line up with the will of God, it means nothing. You've talked a good talk, and you've even walked a good walk, but you still have hatred and bitterness in your heart. I believe, I help us, Holy Ghost, I believe that in times past, that forgiveness has been overlooked because we didn't understand the reconciliation that goes along with it. And that's why I believe strongly that we keep finding ourselves in the same predicament of trying to forgive somebody because we've only voiced it and we have not acted it out. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Jesus. We're talking about being ambassadors. We're talking about a job we have to do. But we have to get ourselves in line with God. That means, and I'm going to say, that means if you truly have forgiven somebody, no matter how many times they have hurt you, no matter how many times that they've bit or put you in a bad place, reconciliation is required to go along with forgiveness. What if they don't want it with me? Well, that's not your fault. That's not your problem. But what becomes your fault and your problem if you do not reconcile? Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's quiet. I told the Lord I didn't want to talk about this. I really did, to be honest. I, I told him, God, I don't want to deal with this this morning. I don't want to bring this out because a lot of us feel like we can have, uh, we can have forgiveness with no reconciliation. But when we look at it from the text, we have to understand that he did forgiveness to bring us back to him. What is the use of forgiveness if we're not reconciling? The forgiveness was the door that brought us back into harmony with him. So now, as ambassadors, in order for us to do it effectively, we have to make sure huh, that we are participating in the very thing that we're claiming. And as an ambassador, our responsibility is to tell a dying world that Jesus has died on the cross for you. And there's been some shedding of the blood. And it's through your acceptance that you receive the very thing that he's done for you. The ministry of reconciliation is a big responsibility. God has made an appeal through us. He, he has chosen to use us as believers to handle this big responsibility. But we cannot handle it. And I'm going back to this because I keep hearing it in my head. We cannot handle it if we're not, going, if we're not doing it the proper way. I begin to look at my own self and my own image. And I begin to really look at how I've been forgiven. And because I've been forgiven through his blood, and I'm an ambassador, and he chooses to use me to move the kingdom of God and to spread the gospel, that means that the same forgiveness that was measured to me, I have to give it back out. I can't pick and choose who I choose to forgive. 
I, whoa, whoa, Lord, help us. I can't pick and choose who I choose to let back in my circle. Not when it comes down to true forgiveness. You know, y'all, we're probably scratching our heads and trying to figure out what in the world is he talking about. Examine the scripture. Examine it just like it is. Don't over-spiritualize it. Don't put your perspective to it. Don't add your, t- uh, don't add your uh, ideology to it. Read it for what it is. The shedding of the blood brought forgiveness. The forgiveness was there to bring mankind back to God. To bring it back to its original state. That means if I had a friend that stepped on my coin too many times. My forgiveness opened the door for reconciliation. Watch this. Not for them to do it again. But to bring us back together in original harmony. His plan has been phenomenal. It's marvelous. He took himself, put himself in flesh Became full man, walked around, gave us an example, died on the cross for us to forgive, also that he can bring us back to him. Bring us back to the original state. Our job is to voice that. Our job is to let people know, even now in the situations we're in, there is a God that still loves, there is a God that still forgives, and there is a God that still wants you. No matter what you have done, Every believer plays a part in the ministry of reconciliation. That's your job. Your job is not to come in here and balk and dance and do all the things we do. But it's to tell a dying world that God loves you. And I know this to be true because he did it for me. Had he had just forgiven the job, it would have been halfway done. The whole purpose of the shedding of his blood, the whole purpose of him dying was so that we can be forgiven and brought back to him. The text said, all things, everything, bring it back to its original state. I know some of us don't want to hear this, but some of us got to go back and finish our forgiveness. Some of us got to go back and finish our forgiveness. Now, I'm not telling you to force a relationship. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying force anything. But when true reconciliation has taken place, and to understand the definition of it, it brings it back to its original state. You have to ask yourself, okay, I'm trying this. What, what is really happening to what we can't bring this back to its original state? Is there still some things that I need to work out? Have I truly forgiven? Lord have mercy. Have I truly let it go? You can tell if you truly have let it go by the way your heart lines up. How you deal with the person. I'm not going to deal with you with the hurt. God doesn't deal with us with the hurt. Whatever I've done before Christ has been forgiven. And as I was reflecting on it, I thought about all that I have done. There are things that I will be taking to my grave. There are things that I've done that nobody know but me and God. Don't you sit and allow the devil to keep telling you that that ain't been forgiven. According to his word, it's been forgiven. It's been paid for. It's a done deal. The problem may lie if you go back and act to that thing that God has forgiven you for. I once was a whole lot of things. And a lot of us have that testimony. We once was a whole lot of things. But because of his shedding of his blood... Because of his reconciliation, bringing us back to him. And the thing about when you come back to him, you get to operate in him. 
That's what sustains you. That's what keeps you. When you function in the Holy Spirit. How do I function in the Holy Spirit? By submitting to his authority. By not letting my will override his will. That's how I operated him. Every day I have to kill my flesh. Every day I have to say yes to his will. We got a job to do. We got a job to do. I believe strongly in my heart. If we're focused on the job that God has given us as ambassadors. As ambassadors. Things will not be as bad as they are. Our focus is not on our jobs. Our focus is on what we're seeing, what is happening. And we're saying, God, where are you in all this? And God says, I'm still here. I'm in the plan. I'm in the plan. The scripture said that all this is from God. I'm trying. He, I, I feel like he's trying to reconcile us back to him. We've gotten out of harmony. He's not going to come back and die on the cross again. That's already done. I don't want to have to deal with myself much longer. Because if I don't, if I do, I may spiral out of control. So I have to deal with what God has put in me. And I have to move forward in him. We're praying for the nation. But we're praying for the nation also. Excuse me. We're praying for the nation because of what's going on. But we also need to start praying for the nation for us to do our jobs. Instead of fighting and bickering. Let's talk about who God is. What he's done through the shedding of his blood. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, all across the world, take your eyes off of what's going on. Put your eyes on Christ. Focus on that. Let that be a reminder that if it wasn't for his blood, there wouldn't be any forgiveness. And because of the blood, the forgiveness was there. And the forgiveness opened the door for reconciliation, which brought us back into harmony with him. He ushered in a contract to bring us together again. Some of us are in breach of the contract even now. Some of us have breached the contract and we can't even pay for it. We can't, we can't afford to get any attorneys. We can't afford to do anything. Because we can't afford it because it's just too much for us to pay for. God looked down at a dying world. He looked at a chaotic situation and said, I got to do something about it. He said, this, is not the, this wasn't the intentions. This, is what, this was not what I had in plan. This was, that, this was not what was in my mind. I got to restore them. I got I to bring them back. I, I got to bring them back. So he came up with this old master plan. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create me a body. This body just can't just show up. I, I, I can make that happen. But I got to create a shell for it. That my spirit can dwell in it. I got to send it through the birthing pains so that the people may believe and understand that I too once was wounded. I too went through situations. I got to create this body that it can walk amongst men. It can be talked about. It can be laughed at. It can be criticized. It can be not believed in. It can be not trusted. He did something about 
our, our wonderness, our wilderness, our, our, our not loving him the way he created us to be. He took that same body and allowed it to be hung on a cross. Took a horrifying, a humiliating death. Hung him between two thieves. Gave up the ghost. So that you and I be, can be reconciled back to him. I said all that to paint this picture and to draw your minds in to, to this solution. This solution can only be done through him. The solution of salvation. And if you're out there and you have not received this gift that's been freely given to us. You have not accepted him as the Lord and Savior of your life. Ruler over your life. I want to encourage you wherever you are now to accept him. Open up your heart and receive. Receive him as ruler of your life. Come on, wherever you are, create an altar. He did this for everybody. He didn't see no colors. He didn't see any genders. He died for everybody. That everybody may accept him. He didn't die for a perfect person. He didn't die for a rich. He didn't die for a poor. He died for everybody. There was no in conclusion. He wanted everybody back to him, back to the original state. I encourage you to do that. Accept him. If you're out there and you've accepted him and you, you, you've been walking in this manner of sanctification and you're ready to truly be an ambassador, be a partaker for us. Be a partaker for and when you begin to forgive and reconcile, people will make mistakes. We're con we, we make mistakes all the time being connected to God. We continue to make mistakes. Don't be so hard on your brother and sister. They made the mistake. You've made them. You've hurt people. Come on. Let's reconcile. Because we have a job to do. Whatever separation existed, whatever sin that happened before Christ, before you accepted Christ, it has been removed, nailed to the very cross that brought us peace. Come on, brothers and sisters, come on.